It's Wednesday, Winning Wednesday. And you guys know it is very difficult sometimes as a mom to make time to study for NCLEX. But we move forward every Wednesday, even if Shiloh is up studying Quick Facts. Hey, speaking of Quick Facts, amazing news about this book. Um, and I'm just saying this. This is what we're saying about Quick Facts. Hey, everybody. Every nurse needs Quick Facts, and we have just two days left for our sale on the yeah. Quick Facts book, where this oh, book is just $15. Yeah. It is. It's yeah. an amazing sale. And we, we did a poll on, um, we did a poll about, of our nursing community, oh, yeah, man. how many people were taking NCLEX, and when you guys were taking NCLEX. And the third of you said that you weren't taking NCLEX until after September. So... It just makes sense for you to get started with Quick Facts now. And then by the time your test comes, you'll be able to get the full virtual trainer and you will be all set to go. So we just have this amazing $15 Quick Facts sale, which I, I don't know if I've ever done anything like that before. But we have it right now and for two days. Can you say two days? <laughs> for two days, it's happening. It's happening. So if you are... Uh, a dedicated parent, your kids are still up, guess what? We are still moving through with Winning Wednesday. And Winning Wednesday is part of, is part of the lives that we are doing in order to get you guys tested before, before, before NCLEX changes. NCLEX Aye. is changing. NCLEX is changing. Tasha Nicole says, Quick Facts book was very helpful signed a licensed nurse i see you <laughs> i see you so um winning wednesday study bye. sessions are going to be part of bye. are you saying bye bye you ready to go say bye bye <laughs> winning wednesdays are going to be part of our campaign bye. to continue to get you guys prepared for next generation NCLEX. all right shiloh give me my quick facts book and tell the remar nurses bye bye can you say bye bye this is quick facts. Okay, you gotta go. All right, this is real, real live, real live moms and nurses happening right now. Okay, so we're going to transition into our hey, everybody, this is Winning Wednesday. I got the first question coming up. Leah says, cute little lady. Hey, Leah, I haven't seen you in a long time. My goodness, it's good to see you. All right, so our first question coming up for Winning Wednesdays, I have a lot of NCLEX questions. We're gonna go over a lot of content, but the idea is that every question that you see, you just try to give it your best. Is it gonna be perfect? Probably not, but if you can get seven out of 10 of these questions right, I think you're really good with your content. So here is the first question. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Good vibes. Good vibes. All right. All right. The first question is this. The healthcare provider ordered a continuous intravenous. Here we go. Here we go. All right. This is question number one. If you can get seven out of 10 right, I'm happy about that. Here we go. The healthcare provider ordered a continuous intravenous nitroglycerin infusion for the client suffering from myocardial infarction. Which of the following is the most essential nursing action? Okay, number one, monitoring urine output frequently. Two, monitoring blood pressure every four hours. Three, Obtaining serum potassium levels daily or four, obtaining infusion pump for the medication. This is a good one, guys. This is a great question and they are challenging on tonight. I know it. Do me a favor. Go ahead and share this video. Remar Nurse University, it just recently started and already... 350 nurses are studying with me in the virtual trainer. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Fast fingers. Come on, put your comments on the screen. Um, you're going to be surprised when I show you this answer because a lot of you, uh, a lot of you got distracted with the distractors. Okay. 
The correct answer is going to be, it is. I like that comment. All of these are very important, but four is the most important because we are talking, we are talking about an intravenous nitroglycerin. And so you have to be very careful um, how that is administered, okay? That is how that is administered. So um, uh, you need a pump in order to do that, all right? So yes, were the other choices, monitoring urine output frequently important? Yes, monitoring the blood pressure. So many people picked this one. And I think it was just because you probably just saw the nitroglycerin. Yeah, you thought about that after you saw them you saw the nitroglycerin you guys know what it does to the blood pressure and so you went with that but there was something very important in the stem of the question and it was how the nitroglycerin is being administered and if the nitroglycerin is being administered intravenously then you definitely need to have an infusion pump an infusion pump as well all right. Good job. Good job, everybody. Let's continue on. Don't worry. You made it to the live class. Share this video. There's there's I want to get to 500. There's 463 of us. So let's keep going. Tag your favorite nursing student. Question number two is this. Mm -hmm. Which data would cause the nurse to question administering digoxin to a client diagnosed with congestive heart failure. Okay. Number one, the potassium level is 3.3. Number two, the digoxin level is 1.2. I see you tagging your favorite nursing student. That's so sweet. <laughs> Three, the client's apical pulse is 64. Or four, the client denies yellow haze. Does the person that you just tagged know this answer? We are talking which data would cause the nurse to question administering digoxin. What would stop you from administering digoxin to a client diagnosed with CHF? Number one, the potassium level, 3.3. Two, the digoxin level is 1.2. Three, client's apical pulse is 64 or four. The client denies yellow haze. What are you saying? Um, some people are like, it's definitely number one. Some people, it's ha it has to be number two. This is what it's like. And look, I'm focusing on pharmacology for a reason because pharmacology and nursing considerations go hand in hand. And you can literally see pharmacology all throughout your NCLEX review. Some of you guys who have taken in the in the past know what I'm talking about. They will include pharmacology, but it just won't be about the medications. It's more, it's not about what is this medication used for? Like that is the least of the information you need to know. You need to know what it does to your patient and when not to give it. Right. So this is kind of what we're talking about now. When would you question or when would you not give this medication? Think about that, guys. The correct answer here is going to be number one. Number one. All right. And this is because this is because um, the potassium level is lower than you want it to be. It's lower than you want it to be. And so for that reason, hypokalemia, if your patient's potassium level is already low, that is going to precipitate, that is going to precipitate them having a potential for digoxin toxicity, digoxin toxicity. So you gotta, you gotta write that down. If you got that one wrong, this is a very, very basic, this is a very, very basic question. And I would say digoxin is one of those medications that are so important. It's actually in Quick Facts two times. So um, on page 25, can't see it. I do a digoxin section just telling you why is digoxin prescribed, right? About the apical pulse. 
So the general information that you need to know about digoxin, but also in the pharmacology section, I go over digoxin again, talking about things like um, the therapeutic level. So the therapeutic level for digoxin, if a client is greater than two, then you have to monitor them for digoxin toxicity. Also, um, what do I want to say? The signs of digoxin toxicity you want to know, okay? The signs of digoxin toxicity you want to know. So the signs of digoxin toxicity are yellow spots, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. However, we always focus when it comes to digoxin on the yellow halos, right? But if NCLEX gives you a question about an, an infant taking digoxin, you're not going to be able to know if they have yellow halos, right? The, 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 the infant is not going to say, oh, I feel nauseated or, oh, I have yellow halos. So what is the sign of digoxin toxicity in, in newborns? And infants, guess what? If you know it, put it on the screen. If you don't know it, it's in quick facts, okay? This is the reason for this book. This is why every nursing student needs to know this book. So definitely know that. And then also you can give um, activated charcoal is one of the solutions for digoxin toxicity. All right, I gotta move on. I gotta move on. We did make it almost 600 nurses. Yes! We are in here on Winning Wednesday. Love it. Here we go. So um, somebody asked, what is the normal? Hold on. I see comments. Somebody is saying, well, what is the normal level for potassium? So if you know that, if you know the normal potassium range, please put it in the comments for that student for me. All right. Um, oh, that's a preview of the virtual trainer. We'll get into that later. Here we go. So um, question number three is this. A client is admitted due to metabolic acidosis caused by diabetic ketoacidosis. The nurse prepares which of the medications as an initial treatment for this problem. Number one, regular insulin. Number two, potassium. Number three, sodium bicarbonate. Number four, calcium gluconate. Oh, this is a great question. This is a great question. We are talking metabolic acidosis. Ooh, hoo -hoo, yes. And this is straight content. This is straight content. So good. Mm, 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 mm. Straight out the virtual trainer. If you have it, if you have the virtual trainer, go ahead and put I have it on the screen. I want to see. I want to see who got this right because they studied from the virtual trainer. It's in this book here. Everything that I go over, you guys, is going to come from the VT. That's just where it is. So I see a lot of people. Mm hmm. Good job, guys. Okay, that is the right answer that I'm seeing. Whew, the correct answer for this is going to be, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Have it. Have it. Have it. Have it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. All right. If you have it, you should know it. Okay. The correct answer, guys, is going to be number one. Remember... You're talking about what? We're talking about diabetic ketoacidosis. That is the issue, okay? The issue, that is the issue, diabetic ketoacidosis. And so the, the correct answer for, for to treat diabetic ketoacidosis, you guys know this, it is going to be number one, regular insulin. Regular insulin, that is going to be the correct answer answer. So we're we're not going to be able to treat the metabolic acidosis if we're not addressing the cause, right? The cause of it is hyperglycemia, right? It's that diabetic um, ketones present, right? That is what, that's what's going on with the patient, the acidosis state. And so we have to be able to treat that. Good job, Leah. I know, I know. I was, uh, Leah, I know you had it. I know you had it. I know you did. Okay, next question is this. Next question is this. 
I told you guys I was going to challenge you tonight. Hey, a nurse provides instructions to a client who is taking level thyroxine. The nurse tells the client to take the medication, number one, with food, number two, at lunchtime, number three, on an empty stomach, or number four, at a snack with at a bedtime, at bedtime with a snack. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, shout out to Nurse Gibson. She says, thank you, Regina, for VT. Pass my NCLEX RN June 2nd. Love you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for coming back, Nurse Latoya. I am so, so proud of you. You did it. You did it. Congratulations. I got to stop everything and shout you out. Who's next? Who is my next Nurse Gibson? about to pass their NCLEX. Woo, it's a beautiful June. It's a beautiful time to do it. We are talking about right here, what you know about this medication and how you give it, how you give it. <laughs> so I say, I'm next, I'm next. I love that. I love that. Pop the answer on the screen. A lot of different ones, okay. All right. The correct answer. Excellent job. I love these comments. I love them. Keep them flowing. Keep them glowing. The correct answer is on an empty stomach. Yes. If you don't know nothing else, if you don't know nothing else about hypothyroidism medication, you best to know, right? You better know oral doses Okay, level thox, um, thyroxine should be taken on an empty stomach and it helps to promote absorption. So this is usually done at 6 a.m., okay? 6 a.m. in the morning, it'll be one of the first medications you get. We got the testimonials coming in. Hey, shout out to Nurse Honeycut. Just yesterday, another RN in the making. I'm everybody that's watching. You better get on. You better get on this train. This is the passing NCLEX train because with God, it's all possible. It is possible. We are moving on. Question number five is this. Woo, here we go. A nurse is receiving some, uh, I'm sorry, a client is receiving somatropin. The nurse monitors which significant laboratory study during therapy with this medication. Okay. Number one, a lipase level. Number two, an amylase level. Number three, blood, urea, nitrogen level. Number four, thyroid stimulating hormone level. It's a community thing around here. This is just what we're doing. We are taking time to prioritize ourselves, and we're not focused on the path, on the past, guys, okay? The past of whatever you did yesterday, it doesn't count. The past of whatever failure you had with the NCLEX exam, we're letting that go. We're, we can't do anything about it, right? If you didn't study like you were supposed to yesterday, yesterday is gone. All you have is right now. You can't even plan for the future, really. Like You can't even plan for the future because nobody knows. All you can do is give your best today, today. And that's what we're doing. Uh, so the correct answer here is is number four write it down write it down you come here to take notes if you find something you don't know hey that's right this is the perfect place to do it this is the perfect place to see something you don't know because guess what it's better here than on your NCLEX exam so let's write it down an adverse effect of somatropin is hypothyroidism right um, thyroid function is monitored throughout therapy. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, this is it. This is why you show up for Winning Wednesdays. And if you are filling this pharmacology review, you want to know about pharmacology every Monday in June, all the way up until July 4th at 8 p.m., we are doing, we are doing Remar Nurse University. 
and we're we are focusing on pharmacology. And so you can get your workbook. If you need to sign up for it, it is not too late. We are starting a new class this Monday coming up. So if you just go to remarnurse.com, okay, um, remarnurse.com, you're able to sign up for it. Okay. All right. It's okay. We're, we're, we're in the middle of studying. I have to keep going. I'm pressing deeper into you guys today. Question number six, a nurse is instructing a client regarding intranasal desmopressin. Hmm. Okay. The nurse tells the client that which of the following is, a, is the side effect of the medication. Okay. All right. A nurse is instructing a client regarding intranasal desmopressin. The nurse tells the client that which of the following is the side effect of the medication. Number one, headache. Number two, vulval pain. Number three, a runny nose. Number four, flushed skin. Woo! Think about what this is for and just give it your best shot. Just give it your best shot. Best, 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 best. And you guys, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes the answer is right in the original question. And you don't have to think too much further than that. And I love this because I see a lot of different answers on the screen. But if you're reading the question, usually you get everything you need by reading the question. Okay. So the right answer, I see the answers on the screen. Let me show you the right answer. The right answer, yes. <laughs> Somebody changed their answer. The right answer is number three. This is an intranasal route of a medication. And so if you think about the medication that you're given, it is going to cause a runny or stuffy nose. And that can happen with the most intranasal medications. All right. So just keep that in mind as a general principle. Sometimes if you don't know something, reading is really fundamental, okay? Being able to read is really going to help you. Just slow down, read it again, look for clues. Slow down and read it again and look for clues, okay? All right. So we're looking for, that was a side effect of the medication. So slow down and read it. We're not looking for an adverse effect here. All right, here we go. Number number uh, seven. Number seven is this. Are you guys ready? Okay. A client is scheduled for a subtotal thyroidectomy and potassium iodide Lugol solution is prescribed. A nurse prepares to administer the medication, knowing that the therapeutic effect of this medication is to, is it number one, replace thyroid hormone, two, prevent oxidation of iodide, three, increase thyroid hormone production, or four, suppress thyroid hormone production. Okay. Read it and give me the answer. Oh, good job, everybody. Good job. I see the right answer amongst the group. And that makes me so happy. It really does. It makes me happy when I see you guys are, are just critically thinking, looking for clues, taking your time. I love all the comments on the screen. Probably gonna have like a thousand comments. <laughs> That's great. All right, correct answer. I'm giving a second for the stragglers is going to be here. We know the client situation is number four. This client is scheduled for a thyroidectomy. So that means that more than likely they are producing way too much thyroid hormone. There is an over there is an overproduction of this. And so the, the thyroid, the thyroid gland needs to be removed. So during that time, uh, iodide is going to be prescribed and this is going to 
suppressed thyroid hormone production. And so it is a Lugo solution is administered for the patient who has a hyperthyroid condition, which we can assume this patient has. So it's going to be to suppress the thyroid function. So there we go. Okay, there we go. Let's move on. I like this next question too. Straight content. Prednisone. Prednisone is prescribed for a client with diabetes mellitus who is taking an intermediate insulin daily. Which of the following, which of the following prescription changes does the nurse anticipate during therapy with the prednisone? Okay. Number one, an additional dose of prednisone daily. Two, a decreased amount of NPH insulin. Three, an increased amount of NPH insulin. Four, the addition of an oral hypoglycemic medication daily. All right. Hey, this is amazing. This is really great. Come on in here and let's get these questions answered. There's almost 800 of us here studying on tonight. And I love it. I love it. This is very important. You got to know. You got to know. Prednisone, okay, prescribed for a client with diabetes mellitus. So we know this patient already has issues with what? And so what is this prednisone going to do for the patient? The prednisone is going to increase the blood glucose levels even more. And so what's going to happen is now your patient's going to need more insulin to cover their increased blood sugar, the hyperglycemia. Great job. That's a fantastic job, guys. Good job. Yes. Let's keep going. Next question. I'm going to press into you guys a little bit more. I want to see how you know what you know about this. We're talking a little bit steroids here. Um, a nurse provides instruction to a client taking fludrocortisone acetate. Okay. The nurse instructs the client to notify the healthcare provider if which of the following occurs. Number one, nausea. Number two, fatigue. Number three, weight loss. Number four, swelling of the feet. All right, all right, all right, all right, here we go. I'm so happy you guys are choosing to study with me. Thank y'all for choosing to study with me today. This just really made my day. I really am so proud of over 800 students are studying NCLEX tonight with me. Woo! <laughs> we are talking about this steroid medication. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, and so what would be very concerning to the nurse who is taking care of this patient, we would tell the client to call the doctor if they notice what? Call the doctor if they notice this, which is swelling of the feet, number four. Yeah, swelling of the feet. So remember, clients who have an increased uh, steroid level, increased cortisone level, they will, they will retain fluid. There will be sodium retention. The pass, the potassium level will drop but the, the, the water retention and sodium retention will result in, yes, fluid volume excess. Yeah, right. So you're going to see things as weight gain, swelling of the feet, or lower legs. Okay, love it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Question here is this, um, a nurse provides medication um, instructions to a client who is taking level thyroxine, right? Uh, the nurse instructs the client to notify the healthcare provider if which of the following occurs. Number one, number one, fatigue. Number two, number two, tremors. Number three, cold intolerance. Number four, excessively dry skin. Hmm. Oh, you guys got this off. That wasn't difficult for you guys. 
Okay, that wasn't difficult for you guys. Uh, I thought that it would be a little bit more tricky. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna. Exp I'm going to put the right answer up because I know that you guys already knew this one. It wasn't challenging. Rats. All right, the correct answer was trimmers. You got that one. So the, the medication can produce signs. Remember, when you are trying to correct hypothyroidism, what you can actually do is send the patient into hyperthyroidism. So you may start to see signs of a client with increased thyroid hormone. They may have the heat intolerance. Their eyes may begin to bulge. They may lose weight because their metabolism is higher. And then also you may see uh, tremors tachycardia, nervousness, insomnia, sweating. And so we have to notify the doctor if these things happen because, because we didn't put them, we didn't put them back into um, a, another situation, another predicament, another predicament. So um, we'll feel so much better. And for the rest of you guys, for the rest of you guys, uh, we are doing the full program right now um, for 65% off. And so that takes the price down from what normally people usually are buying this thing for $369, the virtual trainer. Right now until Friday, July 8th, it is $169. And so if you don't know the virtual trainer, if you don't know the virtual trainer, this is where my this is where my full course is. I'm just going to show you guys how you sign in for it. So when you purchase the virtual trainer, we'll sign in under Mark's account, um, you are going to get the entire program, the entire course, and it is going to come with my full lecture videos. So whether you're a registered nurse or a practical nurse, we have something for you. So let me show you or give you an example of what it is like to study with the virtual trainer you're gonna go in and you are going to be able to watch all of my lectures. You're gonna be able to watch all of my lectures. So let me plug and play one in right now for you guys. Let's do orthopedics. And I don't, I don't know, um, I'm gonna just give you guys a preview of it, right? Get in the virtual trainer if you need this information. Therapeutic communication has a very important purpose because these are going to be strategies that we can use as registered nurses to help our clients express their feelings more effectively. So I like to use the acronym SOLAR, S-O-L-A-R. These are strategies we can use. The S stands for sit in silence. It is okay to just be quiet and allow the client to express their feelings. The O stands for observe with openness. The L stands for listen and lean forward. These are both therapeutic actions. A stands for at eye level. It's okay to sit down, look your client in the face and be at eye level while you're listening. And then the R stands for relax and also rephrase what the client is saying. Mm -hmm. Now, these are things that we don't do when we're trying to be therapeutic. The first is give our personal opinions. Even if the client asks you, 
would you have this procedure? What do you think I should do? Would you take this medication? Those are big no-nos. Don't give your personal opinion about their situation. The second thing is changing the subject. Mm -mm. Third is false reassurance. False reassurance is saying things like, if you do this, you'll feel better. Or don't worry, everything will be okay. Those things make the client feel like you don't really care. Next up, we have arguing with the client. It may be easy to fall into this trap, but don't do it. And also using words like bad, good, wrong, or right are non-therapeutic. On NCLEX, we choose to do these things. And the first is never ask why. Never ask why a client is doing something, why they feel a certain way. We just don't ask them that. Also, when you're being therapeutic, never promise that you won't tell anyone because as registered nurses, you do have a responsibility to include other healthcare professionals in some areas of the client's care. So on NCLEX, let's look for number one, open-ended questions, two, answers that focus on the feelings, three, answers that reflect or rephrase what the client is saying. Remember, when you use therapeutic communication, it allows the client to really make their own choices. So the next part of my therapeutic communication, I wanna focus on medications. And I wanna look at the digoxin parameters before we move on. Now, the digoxin parameters have to do with when to hold the medication. You can give digoxin at any age group. So you know you have to take an apical pulse for a full minute before you administer it. So let's talk about what the hold rate is of the heart. So for newborns, if the heart rate is less than 100, then you hold the digoxin. For one to three years old, if the heart rate was less than 90, then you hold the medication. Three to eight years old, if the heart rate less than 80, then you hold the medication. And then eight to adult, if that heart rate was less than 60, then you hold the medication. More therapeutic communications, we're gonna look at our important drug antidotes. Antidotes can also be called reversal agents on NCLEX, but they mean the same thing. So we're gonna look at the medication and the antidote. The first medication, magnesium sulfate, the antidote is calcium gluconate. Insulin is glucagon, heparin, it is protamine sulfate. For methotrexate, we have lecuvirin, and for warfarin, you can have vitamin K or fresh frozen plasma. I want to leave you guys with the needle information. Yes, as registered nurses, you will be given a mini injections. So I wanna talk about the three different kind, the subcutaneous, the intradermal, and the IM. We need to know the skin layers that are penetrated, the gauge of the appropriate needle, and that length. So looking at the subcutaneous injection, the skin layers that are penetrated are first the epidermis, then the dermis into the subcutaneous fat. So you have three there. The appropriate gauge is 25 gauge and the length is 5 eighths of an inch. Next, we have the intradermal. When you do an intradermal injection, you go through the epidermis and into the dermis. The gauge is 25 and the length is 5 eighths of an inch. Finally, we have the intramuscular injection. The skin layers penetrated are the epidermis through the dermis, through the subcutaneous fat, and into the muscle. The gauge required for IM injection is 22, and the length is one inch. 
Great job, guys, on therapeutic communication. Let's keep going. Buddy. Okay, so I am trying to get you guys the content that you need from the virtual trainer because, because NCLEX is changing and I don't want anybody to have to take an exam they don't need to take. So I'm going to show you diabetes insipidus. I'm going to show you the content from the virtual trainer. I'm going to show you how you should be studying, what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like when you're in the virtual trainer. But first, I want to show you a Remar nurse. I want to show you a Remar nurse. So we're going to put up a video. Hi, you guys. Um, I just wanted to kind of tell you a quick story. Back in 2009, I graduated from nursing school and I took my NCLEX and unfortunately I didn't pass the first time. But nursing has always tugged at my heart and this is something that I really feel is my passion. And so I decided to get back into it. So I stumbled upon Regina's video on YouTube. And when I tell you the motivation, the content, oh my God, I fell in love, okay? So immediately I purchased the Quick Facts, the five star, instantly. I said I have to get on her program, see what's going on, to see if I can, you know, get back into the nursing field. Boom. Then I purchased the VT trainer. And let me tell you, it is the bomb, okay? Content, content, content. When I mean you need content, oh, it helped me so much. Thank you so much, Regina. I appreciate it. Oh, I am so grateful. And those exact phrases and words that you told me to repeat, I repeat it every day. I can, I will, I must pass in clicks. And guess what, y'all? I'm officially a Remar nurse, and I just want to tell you, you can, you will, you must pass NCLEX, you can do it. Stay committed. Thank you so much, Regina. Diabetes insipidus versus syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormones should really be an advanced clinical topic because most nursing students really don't know the nuances between the two. I find too that most nurses working forget how they are different. So let's start with this. Both are a problem with the antidiuretic hormone. Both are a problem with ADH. So what does the antidiuretic hormone do? Can you think about it? Let's, let's look at it like this. When you have a diuretic, what is the function of the diuretic? What does diuretics tell the body to do? They tell the body to get rid of water. So if we have something that's antidiuretic, what is it gonna tell the body to do? It's going to instruct the brain to tell the rest of the body that we are holding on to water. We are retaining fluid. So both of these conditions will be a problem with fluid in the body. Now let's look at diabetes insipidus first because we can learn a lot from just the name diabetes insipidus. So when we see the word diabetes, what do we think of? Most of you all will say we think of high blood sugar, we think of hyperglycemia, but that is not what diabetes means. The word diabetes means a person who is putting out a lot of urine. That's what it means. It means a person who's putting out a lot of urine. The term after diabetes will describe what that urine looks like. So here we have diabetes, somebody that's putting out a lot of urine, and we have insipidus. The term insipidus means clear, colorless, odorless, tasteless. Because remember, back in the day, doctors used to drink urine to determine what kind of illness a patient has. So diabetes insipidus 
used to be called water diabetes as well because the urine looked like water. But it is a problem with too little ADH. So you don't have the antidiuretic hormone in the proper amount telling the body to keep water. So it just puts it out. It just puts out all the fluid because there's no antidiuretic hormone there. So when you think of diabetes insipidus and the signs, the signs are severe dehydration. Yes, because somebody with diabetes insipidus has a very high increased urine output. So the urine output can actually be up to 30 liters a day, which is a lot of urine. Also, because the patient is so dehydrated, they're going to be thirsty. They're gonna be complaining of thirst. Now, critically think here. Somebody with diabetes insipidus that's putting out a lot of urine, is their blood pressure going to be high or low? What do you think? Is the blood pressure gonna be high or low? The blood pressure is going to be low. So what is the heart rate going to do to compensate? The heart rate is going to increase. So you will have those two vital sign changes. But look at the signs again. Do we see hyperglycemia anywhere in diabetes insipidus? Do we expect the blood sugar to be high? No, not at all. So that's why it's so important for us to study the content because on the exam, I'm telling you, hyperglycemia will be a choice there to determine if you really know what you're talking about. All right, so diabetes insipidus has nothing to do with blood sugar ranges. So what is the treatment for diabetes insipidus? What is it? Because the client does not have enough of the antidiuretic hormone, we need to supplement what is supposed to be there. So we need to give a medication that's going to act like the antidiuretic hormone. Do you know what that medication is? It is vasopressin, vasopressin. Yes, vasopressin tells the body to hold on to water. It's really good to also improve low blood pressure. So if you plan to work in the ICU where patients have problems maintaining their blood pressure, vasopressin will be a very popular medication for you. Now that you understand when you have too little ADH, let's look at syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone where you have too much of that antidiuretic hormone. You have way too much so it is telling the body that we're going to save all of the water that we have. We're not gonna put out any fluids. <laughs> so the signs of SIADH are fluid overload. Of course, fluid overload. Also, oliguria. Oliguria is very little urine output. Because the client has an increased fluid intake or fluid overload, Talk to me about their sodium level. Will the sodium level be up or down? We would expect that sodium level to go down because of the fluid overload in SIADH. Now with diabetes insipidus, we would expect that sodium level to be way high because the patient is dehydrated. But here, low sodium level. So with the low sodium level, we're also going to see a client that is confused. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you guys know the condition SIADH now. Tell me the treatment. What is the treatment for somebody who has too much fluid in their body? What are we going to give them? We're going to give them diuretics. Yes, we're going to give them diuretics. And specifically the osmotic class of diuretics is going to be best because that's going to help pull water off of the brain too as well. Also, we definitely would want to put these clients on fluid restrictions. So you have this whole page filled out and now you understand the difference between diabetes insipidus and SIADH. Thank you for studying with Remar. We're gonna keep making it simple for you guys. Uh, and we're moving on to the next topic. So if 
you have the virtual trainer workbook, it is on page 71 if you are um, studying for NCLEX. And so that is what I'm trying to show you guys is, yes, we do the short videos on YouTube and Facebook, but there is so much more that I can share with you to help prepare you for your licensure exam. So it's up to you to take the next step. I'm telling you, when you get your virtual trainer, go ahead and put, print out your daily study calendar. So every time you sit down with the VT, you know exactly what to do. And right now it is on sale for an amazing price under $200. It's literally, it's just literally $169, right? It's $169. So, um, make the investment in yourself. Most of you that are watching are repeat test takers and you know how you prepared when you failed. You know you didn't go over the content like you needed to. You know you didn't have a grasp on the information and you see how much you learn in such a short period of time. Like literally, we went over diabetes insipidus and SIADH in seven minutes. And so if you really were 100% present during that video, you understand the concept and now you can move on to the next thing. So it's about helping you get your license in six weeks or less. Literally, I'm focusing on the on less part. All right. Um, six weeks or less. And so right now, if you need to get in the VT, get in the VT. Um, and if you're just starting or you're new to nursing school, the quick facts start with your quick facts. And so for the next two days, this is just $15. But during Remar Nurse University, I'm making the virtual trainer available to really anybody who wants it. Really, um, you're going to get 90 days in the virtual trainer. That's three months in the VT for $169. I, I don't even know, like, uh, that. that's like literally just dollars a day for this program. And remember, with my program, with my program, you're getting all the lecture videos. You're getting the, the entire lecture videos in, in immediately access to you. I'm going to show you else what else you get. All right. And so you're also getting the practice exams that come with. Right. So you're getting the homework and you're getting the practice exams. You're getting my complete course online. And I haven't even, you know, um, showed you all of it. There's so much more. And so I like the comment that if, if the YouTube videos can help you imagine what the full program does. And so I do, I want you guys to really make the effort. I want you really to make the effort to consider what would it be like to get your nursing license and to be able to have this course and be able to have this course um, for your home study. It is it is your home study review, right? Uh, a lot of you don't have time to go to classes, sit in classes all day. And so the virtual trainer, um, the virtual trainer is the best option for you. And I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to bring it to you. So thank you guys for studying with me. I'm going to close this class because you know what? We have another one coming up on Monday night, we are bringing back Remar Nurse University. We are doing more pharmacology. And I'm encouraging you guys. I am encouraging you guys to make this your time to get your nursing license. I will be preparing. I will be preparing nursing students for the next generation NCLEX. Absolutely. I'm going to talk about the um, I'm going to talk about the case studies. I'm going to talk about the extended multiple response. I'm going to talk about the partial scoring. I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about the clinical judgment measurement model. All of these things I will be explaining to the students. However, if you don't need to take this very challenging, difficult exam that is coming April 2023, if you can take your NCLEX before April 2023, I highly advise you to do so. I highly advise you to do so. So this is it. I'm trying to get you guys to understand with God is possible, period. Just do what you need to do. Whatever steps you can take to help further. I don't want to start preaching tonight. <laughs> All right. That's, I'll just say this. 
it's your time now. So um, make the most of every opportunity. Thank you guys so much for studying with me. Honestly, it's been a pleasure tonight. We've studied for almost an hour, but we got some good work in. So consider this class done, 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 done. God is good all the time. He did it for us again today. Whew. We could take a rest. I'm coming back. This was Winning Wednesday. NCLEX is changing. NCLEX is changing. So take advantage of the free pharmacology review. It's coming next Monday. If you still need to sign up for it, go ahead and sign up for it. Hit up remarnurse.com. You can also get your virtual trainer there as well. Uh, and you can make today the best day. All right. See you guys later. You can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX.